began with a dream. The young man, Raymond H. Clark, sitting on the banks in Richmond. All I can tell you from what Alan told me is that his father would dream up ideas of things he wanted to do. And um, he found out about traffic getting from Marin County to Contra Costa County. You had to go up to Highway 37, Vallejo, and then come back down again. And he thought, hmm, you know, it's only a few miles from San Quentin to Point Richmond. And, uh, you know, maybe this would be a way to work things out. And, and obviously on the blueprints that you showed me, you know, it said July, and I know the boat was finished, I believe it was May of 1916. All aboard! It wasn't just a people mover, and that's the neat thing about the whole ferry company, and obviously the Charles Van Dam being the first primary boat and state, you know, kind of workhorse of the company, you know, the people, the cars, and, and the cattle. That grew into, I think, bigger than they even thought. And, you know, the, the quotes in the books and the publications in the newspapers that, you know, that Raymond Clark said that they wouldn't hire any duck hand that couldn't punch cattle kind of thing because they always would have to bring the dairy cows. And so it's just, it, it goes beyond just moving people or cars. It's kind of a, a very interesting extra. I, I do remember going on the Charles Van Dam because we were so thrilled by the Charles Van Dam. They had a second deck on there, and the second deck had a lunch counter. And you could get on the Charles Van Dam in Martinez and order uh, a cheese sandwich, a grilled cheese sandwich for 30 cents. And of course, a glass of milk for 10 cents maybe, or a cup of coffee for a nickel. Spring of 1958, I was trying to convince this beautiful red-headed lady that, <laughs> that I was the man of her dreams or something. And I took her to a restaurant on the estuary called the Canton Ferry. It was a Chinese restaurant. I knew that it was the converted the version of the Charles ferryboat Charles Van Dam, which I'd heard about. Except I remember the ferry was kind of cut up. They had cut holes in the side there so you could see the paddle wheels. I don't remember too much about the dinner because I was smitten with her and I uh, got down at Bended Knee and asked her to marry me and she said yes and we did. They had been arrested over in, um, in the Alameda Estuary and they went bankrupt and in order to keep seizure of all the things that they had on board the boat they brought it over here and grounded it in the mud right off Old Point there. For a while the boat just sat out in the, in the bay and uh, my husband said, I want you to, don't you get yourself in a mess over there. And I, I'm not. You, you go on and do your thing and I'll do mine. When they brought the boat on in, it was water all around it mm. and so the guy said, we've got all this dirt we've got to get rid of. Do you know where we can dump it? I said, right here. <laughs> and he said, you're kidding. I said, why should I kid you? I need the water. Gone. <laughs> well, the boat just set out in the, in the bay. And uh, my husband said, I want you to, don't, don't you get yourself in a mess over there. 
I'm not. <laughs> you you go on and do your thing and I'll do mine. When they brought the boat on in, it was water all around it. Mm. And so the guy said, we've got all this dirt we've got to get rid of. Do you know where we can dump it? I said, right here. <laughs> And he said, you're kidding. I said, why should I kid you? I need the water. Gone. <laughs> We're trying to become an, uh, a restaurant like Andine's because Marty Martinez was half owner of it. And he also owned, half owner owned, of uh, half owner of Andine's. <laughs> and then it changed and, you know, it was, then it was a rock and roll club. I mean, it, there was rock and roll music there all night, Saturday, Friday night till Saturday morning about 2 o'clock, between 2 and 5. Same thing Saturday. So I got to where I could audition, Wendy and I could audition the bands that were going to play there to see who got thumbs up or th thumbs down. Now, uh, Janice Joplin and Big Brother and whole they didn't have to audition. I mean, you know, they were slammed up. It's the same scene. It was this North Beach scene, there was the Red Dark Saloon, there was the Charles Van Damme, and there was another band called the Flaming Groovies, and uh, I'm not sure what the connection is, but somebody set the place on fire. But, uh, God, those were, those were some times. I think we're living in the good old days, the best anybody ever had. Hell, I think we're living in the good old days, so cheer up, brothers, and be glad. Well, things we're doing now will be memories later, so you better do the best that you can. Well, if you start right now, it's bound to get better. You'll soon be the best in the land. Well, cause I think we live It seemed like another culture at that time. Well, there were a number of high points where people all over the world knew about Gate 5. And you see, that was right after Haight-Ashbury. And that, that was the next movement. And uh, people from uh, the famed hog farm came and visited and stayed for two or three days. And uh, a lot of, uh, lot of artists lived there, a lot of people that were writers, very serious people, but yet they had this freedom that it was just unparalleled. Yeah, the waterfront was a special place. Uh, behind the Van Dam was like sanctuary for a lot of us. It was a uh, uh, self-contained community. Um, Rip Torn and Geraldine Page moved onto the boat. Rip Torn and Geraldine Page, oh, they stayed yeah. right on the Van Dam. Living, living on a Van Dam with their kids. How about, uh, and I was going to turn the Van Dam into a Shakespearean theater. Him and uh, Geraldine. They didn't get too far with that, but it was certainly fun to have them around. We didn't know how famous they were, so of course we treated them like average scum rather than some special scum. And so it really was. It, was a, it became a Maple Road community center. We had organized parties on the Van Dam when we had the Red Lakes Band playing. This guy, Joey Joseph Brennan, Joey Crunch as we call him, he showed up on the scene. He was such a good drummer that he made me want to play. And so. We started the Red Legs Up, and I believe that was 1970 or 71. I remember the Charles Van Dam, a worn out old ferry boat that the Red Legs converted into a homemade dance hall. It was funky, all right, but that didn't stop people from flocking on board come Saturday night. Marquez leased the property to Waldo Point Harbor, who then wanted to develop it as housing. When Arquez 
sold the property to Walda Point Harbor, of course it was going to affect all of us and we started having meetings led by Perot Caro in the Charles Van Dam. The meetings were high adrenaline, high energy, very exciting, and we were all young and energetic and ready to fight this change. Ted Rose came in with a bulldozer, no matter what paperwork we had, to save that structure and just started bulldozing. Um, that's when members took to the tops of the ferry boat and climbed the stacks and stayed up there and the police had to climb up there to get them down and everyone was arrested trying to uh, bring attention to the fact that we were in line for historical status for those structures. Well, the company that tore down the Charles Van Dam lost money doing it. They were used to tearing down buildings. They had no idea how a vessel was assembled. To physically watch it come down broke our hearts. And then when it was down, there was no barrier anymore between us and the outside world. And that was very scary. It was one of the monumental things that marked the change of an era. Well remembered, but gone. Tomorrow may never come around So open up your eyes and see where you are And don't give a thought where you're bound Well, cause I think we're living in the good old days The best anybody ever had Well, I think we're living in the good old days So cheer up it was in April 2005 when Dona and I walked past Catherine Lyons, who was taking a photo of the waterfront community in front of the Charles Van Dam paddle wheel and smokestack. She told us that these artifacts were to be destroyed to make way for a public park. She had taken a similar photo back in 1983, before the whole boat was torn down. We were moved to try and save the artifacts and to tell the story of the Charles Van Dam. It was the hub of the waterfront community with a history spanning over 100 years and we didn't want the stories and its memories to be lost. So we started the Charles Van Dam Ferry Project. With growing support from Telling the Ferry Story and Mike Linder coming to the rescue, the artifacts are saved from the bulldozers. All the architectural drawings uh, were produced my, by my architectural firm, uh, Pro Bono. All the structural drawings were donated by structural engineer Greg Wallace. So uh, here's the elevation. Uh, Walnut Point Harbor has agreed to, once it's installed, to insure it and maintain it. Here's the floor plan. Uh, site, you know, that shows uh, the deck, 
and the paddle wheel and the smokestack with guy wires like it was in the old days and some other artifacts we collect and all around the perimeter will be signage to tell the story, to, to tell the nine lines. We have to have a giant uh, a trestle uh, to support it and we have uh, a donation from a machinist to create the bushings so we, this wheel can turn. And we're hoping to find a compressor that the whistle can blow. Uh, so now what? Um, well, this is a multi-phase project, okay? Uh, we've built awareness, uh, we've established a nonprofit uh, that was already in place, who stepped up, the RBMA. Uh, we saved the artifacts from being destroyed, we relocated them, we secured the site, so we can put it back where the ferry boat used to be. We've designed everything. We got it all approved. We got the structural plans completed. We have bids from contractors, okay, to build it. And now we're at phase uh, uh, 10, which is funded, okay? So we've come a long ways in these years to save it, restore it, and now we want to exhibit it. This is what it'll look like in the park. This will create an opportunity for something to be happening in that park and to tell the story about what was here once so people appreciate. It's an artifact that yeah. connects us to the story mm -hmm. so we can tell the story instead of just waving our hands. It's an artifact that connects us to our history. And when you understand our history, it helps you understand who we are and where we are. And that's why we give it Charles Lundau, to tell the story. Everyone who took that boat was passionate about some kind of creative dream that they wanted to start. And then there must be some way of kind of saving it. So at the time, you know, we didn't know if we could save the wheel. We thought at least kind of save its story and let the, the Charles Van Down talk for itself. It would be a shame to see this go because I don't think there are any other paddle wheels in public parks like this one. The Charles Van Dam can tell its own story because people cared enough to save it. Help us share over 100 years of local waterfront history with the Charles Van Dam Ferry artifacts restored as a public display to inspire many generations to come. <laughs>